The story in Wellfleet at 1440 Chequesset Neck Road is a long one, but maybe not as long as one might think. In 2006, the Blash family bought the property for $2.5 million. I had just come to Cape Cod in 2009, and this, this was in the news. There was, they were building this in an area that was ill-advised. It, it's not a great place for a number of reasons. One, it was really close to the bluff, but um, some of the work that we've done at the center and we're doing at that time um, raised a lot of uh, eyebrows. In 2008, the family got a permit to demolish the old structure, the Billboard House Cottage. In 2010, the Bloshes built a mansion, two times the height and three times the floor space of the old cottage. I mean, typically the, the primary drivers of change along the coast, especially in Cape Cod, are storms. The more storms there are, the more erosion there is. And over time, that, that sort of evens out over the years. And that's why we say, in Cape Cod, on Cape Cod Bay, the, the erosion rate is about a foot a year, right? It's less than on the outer beach. The outer beach is about three feet a year, inside is about a foot a year. And that's because there are less storms, less powerful storms, so the erosion is a little slower. But there are still storms, and there's still erosion. So you're not going to lose those big numbers. You're not going to see that big number of erosion um, on Cape Cod Bay side. But because there's less sand in the system anyway, there's sort of less sand to repair damage. So during a storm, there's erosion, the sand gets pulled off the beach, and then after the storm goes away and there's quiet waves, the sand gets pushed back, right? That's a normal sort of uh, uh, process. Well, there's less sand on the Cape Cod Bay side uh, in relation to what there is on the ocean side. So if, a, a, if the same amount of sand were to be removed from the Cape Cod Bay side, it would be harder to replace and come back and build up a dune than on the ocean side. One of the things we do with the center is we calculate sediment budgets for a stretch of coast. And a sediment budget is simply figuring out how much sand comes into a system and how much sand goes out. The easiest way to think about it for folks out here is the Outer Cape, okay? Now you think about the Outer Cape Beach. All the sand that erodes from those bluffs either ends up in Provincetown or it ends up in Monomoy. Sink, right? Two sinks and one source. That's, that's the way we do sediment budgets. So the sand is coming from the eroding bluffs in the outer beach. It's going to either Provincetown or Monomoy. That's where most of the sand ends up. So you've got your source and your sinks, right? So on the Cape Cod Bay side, you've got Provincetown Harbor, which is always clogging up with sand. They're dredging it, right? That's where the sand goes. And then Billingsgate, which keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger over time, right? So you've got those two sinks and the source is just about that Duck Harbor, Blash House region that we're talking about. Graham Geis at the center, he's, he's, he's the person who started doing this out here and we've been doing it ever since. We did some of that, a lot of it in Cape Cod Bay and we did it along this stretch of coast, right? What you don't wanna do is you don't wanna manipulate the stretch of shoreline that is the, the source of sand. And one of the sources of sand is this area. It's right around where the house is up to just about where Duck Harbor, Duck Harbor Beach is. And that's the source. So you want to treat that a little differently. Um, so when that house was going up there, the house itself isn't a problem. Protecting the house, preventing the bluff from eroding, that's a problem. And it was sort of inevitable. If you're going to put a house that close to the bluff, we talked about it that day uh, when we wrote that letter to the town that... Uh, it won't be too long until there's a problem because those bluffs just actively erode. The top of the coastal bank under the Blosh House has eroded landward towards the existing dwelling approximately 57 feet since 2006. Many homeowners try to put in preventative measures to slow the progress of erosion. Since 2013, the owners of this property hired contractors to dump thousands of cubic yards of sand to shore up the bluff, only to have it washed away a short time later. Yeah, so again, in Massachusetts, when you build a structure that prevents that bluff from eroding, you are required by law or an ordinance to 
put that sand that would have eroded from that bluff back into the system. Because if you were to deprive the system of that sand, there's going to be problems somewhere else, right? Because the sand's always moving along shore one way or the other. Uh, there's a net direction of sediment transport, and that's where that sink uh, source to sink thing comes from, right? Right. So on the outer beach, in the outer beach I always use because it's a more clear example. All those big bluffs erode, sand doesn't stay there, it goes somewhere else. Some build seawalls, others try to restore the sand. There are even ways to bury geotubes at the base of the bluff in order to redirect the water's energy and direction. So we have a really good understanding of what happens when you build structures. Um, in, in the 80s, there was a, a, a seminal paper that was called Seawalls versus Beaches, and that was the title. Seawalls versus Beaches, it was one or the other, right? So if you put a seawall on the beach, the beach goes away over time. That's just what happens. And if you look around uh, this country, and when you have places that have a lot of seawalls or have had seawalls for a while, Erosion keeps happening, sea level keeps happening, and rather than the, the shoreline moving inward, moving landward, it moves down, right? And so then all of a sudden at high tide, you don't have a beach. And then after a while at low tide, you don't have a beach. And then you have this just wall between you and the ocean. So as far as the, the coastal environment is concerned, the more developed it is, the less natural it is. So on the, on the bay side where we're talking about those bluffs right near that house and just south of Duck Harbor Beach, those bluffs are eroding and that sand is going to go either to Billingsgate or it's going to make its way to Provincetown. If you take that sand out of the equation, now there's a deficit in that sediment budget, right? And that deficit is going to be uh, sent throughout the system as it goes. So areas where um, there would have been sand, there just isn't. And some people think that what's going on at Duck Harbor Beach, myself included, might be related to the lack of sediment. Uh, that is could it would have made its way to Duck Harbor Beach. Again, the, the the size of the house, as far as the coastal processes go, doesn't really change much, honestly. Unless it, I mean, it's a big house, but that doesn't change all that much. The problem is the length of shoreline you have to protect. Uh, manufactured tubes, I think they're about ten feet wide. They're really big, and they put them down there. They usually fill them with sand, uh, and they put them at the base of the bluff to prevent that bluff from eroding. Right. So the problem is you're preventing that bluff from eroding. So that sand is not getting into the system. All of these measures were considered, and some with permission, implemented. But if you've lived in a coastal community long enough, you find that nature always has the last word. But the other problem with these structures is at the ends of the structures, where they end, and you could see it in the video, uh, the drone footage. Where it ends, you have these geotubes and it's kind of protecting the base of the bluff, but right on either side, the shoreline's just gonna keep on eroding, right? But what happens is, because the waves can't impact the edge of the structure, they impact where the sand is, where the structure isn't, right next to it, where the structure ends, and it actually, erosion ex accelerates at the end. And they, it's, it's so well known, it's called end effects. It's where the structure ends, erosion accelerates. One of the things about erosion control structures is that once they go in, they rarely come out. Stone revetments, seawalls, once they're in, they're in. You know, So it's a permanent uh, addition to the shoreline. And again, it's right next to the natural shoreline. So it's only going to make that worse. So the harder the structure, the more intense the end effects are. And right? if you were to put these geotubes, it's, it, you know, it, it, it will accelerate that erosion at one rate. And then if you do a sloped revetment, it gets a little faster. And then if you do a seawall, that's the fastest because it's a vertical wall and it's a hard, and you can see it up and down. If you walk down the coast of East Ham, you can see that uh, on the bay side. There are structures and there are town beaches and you can see the, where the shoreline just changes. Town, the town beach goes much further back than the sea walled or the revetted shoreline. Most people think that erosion happens faster on the ocean side than the bay side. But in this case, several factors accelerated the erosion. Building structures on a, on a coast is, is just not a good idea because it's not, it's not a long-term solution and it makes everything around it worse, right? So uh, there's, this, there's this common idea that if you have water flowing in your property, you can't just redirect it to, the next, to your next door neighbors, right? If there's some kind of problem, you can't just put it over there, right? That's not okay. We do that same kind of thing at the coast. We do things on our property that negatively impacts our neighbors and somehow it's okay. 
So there's this we kind of play by a different set of rules sometimes at the coast, which makes it trickier. And the problem is never going away. A lot of people are concerned about an inlet forming in the gut, more or less where that house is, because you have that low lying area behind it. And it's just this, you know, small piece of land that's separating Cape Cod Bay from, from the gut that, that leads uh, into Wellfleet Harbor. I don't have as big a concern about that because one of the things you need to form an inlet is you need a deep basin of water to, for the water to flow in and out of. And if you look at the gut, it's really shallow, right? So there's not a lot of water uh, for an inlet to form. Were it to make it through um, that area that we're talking about where that house is, um, it's unlikely, it's very unlikely an inlet would form there. It's just not the right fit. It, you need a deep basin of water uh, behind it. So while it's, of course it's possible, I, I don't think it's likely. What I would do, if I, what I would recommend to people, the video you showed me of the of the waves rushing up against the bluff, what I would like people to do is look at that video and imagine themselves standing there. And this was a really nice day in November in Cape Cod Bay. It wasn't that bad a day. And picture yourself standing right at the base of that bluff. There is an enormous amount of wave energy there. And it's a quiet day. It's not a storm, right? It's just a high, high tide. And, and the wind's coming out of the northwest as it does this time of year, and it's pushing water against there. But look at some of the waves hitting that bluff. It is very, very powerful. And it's just loose sand. It's loose sediment. There's nothing. It's it's incredibly powerful environment. Even if it's Cape Cod Bay, yeah, it's way more powerful on the ocean side. Go there and stand on the bay side during a storm in the winter. Well, some people buy this knowing Right. They, they buy it knowing and they're, they're, they're fully informed. They understand. And that's the risk they're willing to take. A lot of people don't, right? A lot of people buying retirement homes or they're moving to the coast for the first time and they don't understand this. It would be great if we could educate those kinds of people who, who, who would like to know this. By November, 2024, the house is no longer listed for sale and looks to be one storm away from falling into the sea.